Welcome to the best of the Leon Charney Report. For over two decades, Leon Charney, one of the architects of the historic Camp David Peace Accords, has interviewed some of the most important figures in modern day history. These interviews provide a window into some of the most significant events of the last 50 years. This episode is a combination of shows about Holocaust Remembrance Day and Independence Day in Israel. It features interviews conducted by Leon Charney with Holocaust survivors. It also features commentary by the director, Sippy Trope, on her new film, Cafe Europa, the story of how Holocaust survivors came to Israel, essentially the story of Israel. Here for direct line with Harry Wolf of Elizabeth, New Jersey, and Jack Burston, also of New Jersey. From Springfield, Springfield New Jersey. New Jersey. Two Holocaust survivors and two viewers of our show, I believe. Yeah. Jack, how do you feel tonight? Well, I feel very sad that six million have perished, and I feel very good that I had the time to live until now and to be at this gathering. And I would never, I think it was uh, the wildest dreams. I would never think that I would be here in Jerusalem for that occasion. Harry, I know you for quite a while and your brother Joe. I know you have a a terrific story of how you escaped uh, the Nazis. Wasn't that through Russia, I think, Harry? Yeah, we were fortunate enough to be deported to Russia and spend the years during the war in Russia, but nevertheless, we lost a lot of relatives. And this evening is a very sad evening for all of us when we remember all the people which perished in Holocaust. But on the other side, I was sitting, I was proud to see the wonderful young people coming to this celebration to show all our enemies that the final solution was a defeat and the Jewish people are living again and they came here to remember the victims of the terrible Holocaust which has taken place to try to wipe out our nation. Harry, I know that you have grandchildren. Do you think your grandchildren can anyway comprehend what you lived through? It's, it's very difficult. It is our duty to keep conveying to them the message that they should strengthen themselves and strengthen the ties with the state of Israel, that something similar should never happen and the Jewish people should always be alert that they are enemies surrounding us and we should develop the inner and the outer strength to be able to fight off all attempts in the future. Jack, briefly, how did you escape? I half and half like I was uh, a part of it with the German people. I come from a famous town, Helm, they call. And I was part uh, of my mother and sister. Oh, my mother and sisters and relatives, the women were left at the German side. My father and two brothers went to the Russian side, so I was doing both sides. Then I joined the partisans, and in 1944, I joined voluntarily the Polish army. And uh, I don't have to tell you what the Holocaust was. Were you an officer or a corporal? I was, I started as a corporal. Now, during that war, you advanced every week. When they progressed with the front, they gave you every, every week a higher rank. You could have wind up being a general. As a matter of fact, I went for a mission to Russia in 1944, and I was a star sergeant, you know? Staff sergeant. Yes, yeah, staff sergeant. And I made myself a nice uniform, you know, with nice boots. So the Russian officers used to salute me first. In 1944, yeah. They're still doing it, Jack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> זה לא מושלם. אני לא מתפאר שזאת הנקמה שלי בהיטלר. לא, אין לי נקמה. אין לי נקמה. איזה נקמה זו יכולה להיות? My name is Tippi Trope, I'm the director of Cafe Europa, uh, which is a 75 minute documentary. Well, this is a story of people who are about 85 to 92. Uh, who were in the Holocaust and then came to Israel and lost a son in a war, a grandson in, a, in, in another war. And now at, at the old age, kind of trying to reflect about their choices and about their journey in Israel. 
Uh, I just want to mention that there are all people who came to Israel and built a family. They had jobs, they are independent. Um, and the reflection is a genuine reflection about what happened to the country, what happened with them, uh, trying to go back to their parents' home, uh, parents home to go to you know, what happened to them in the Holocaust, uh, and then losing a child or a grandson and putting life together. And what's interesting about the film is really the relationship between them and their daughters. It's like they're really being taken care of by the daughters in a very intimate way. Uh, which is really exceptional, and I think it's very unique to Israel when really people take care of their old, you know, parents. Um, they all meet in one place, which is Cafe Ropa. It's a coffee place in Ramat Hasharon. Uh, they come once a day on Sunday and they dance, and they try to forget and they don't talk about the Holocaust, and they just eat a cake and drink a co coffee, an Israeli coffee. Um, also, the, the film really deals with what memory. How do you keep your memories? How do you retain your memories? So some, there is one person who never talked about the Holocaust. Two years ago, he started to draw hundreds of small drawings of bits and pieces of what he saw in the Holocaust. And then he lost a grandson. And when his grandson died uh, in Lebanon war, this is when he drew his last drawing. And the, the point is what they do. You have Holocaust Day, Memorial Day, and then a week later, you have the Memorial for the Soldiers and the Independent Day. So it's within one week they have to go through all these incredible uh, moments when they have to, I don't know when their memory goes. They go to the parents, they go to the Holocaust, they go to losing you know, a son or a grandson, and immediately after to celebrate uh, the biggest joy of having a, you know, building up a country, because all of them came uh, just before the independent war. Um, all of them built the country, put everything aside. Most of them never talked about the Holocaust. They started to talk only now, and now they're rushing, actually, to tell those stories. So um, in the independent day, a day after they come, because they were in a grave, actually today, they will be in a grave next week, and in the same evening, they will go to celebrate. And you have it even in the film. When they go to the graveyard to, to, about, you know, to, to cry about their son or their grandson, a few hours later, they go to the center of the city and they are very joyful and sing. And then you have those fireworks in the film. And I had to witness how they go from one moment to another, from one bit of, of, uh, of, of really losing so much. And I don't, don't, don't understand how they take their strength, you know, and maintain their zeal of life. But yet, you see them every Sunday go and dance. In modern Middle East history, only one peace treaty has stood the test of time, the 1978 Camp David Accord. In the new documentary film, Backdoor Channels, The Price of Peace, learn the true story behind the greatest diplomatic achievement of our time and its lessons for the future. The price of peace is very high. To have this courageous man and my close friend killed. Backdoor channels, the price of peace. Now available at select stores including Barnes & Noble and online at Amazon.com. The preceding program was brought to you by Backdoor Channels, the price of peace.